So look, bro. Happy Yon Day. Uh, I hope y'all week is 100. Mine is, you know what I'm saying? It's steady. It's just coasting. It's ghosting. Um, we got another reaction video that I feel is going to be dope. One thing I'm going to start doing, bro, I do read the comments, but some of y'all comments I'll be wanting to respond instead of, like, going ahead and typing it out. Even though I do type it out sometimes, I'm going to bring it right here up in the intro, right? And I dropped a video yesterday on my other channel. That's another thing. Right now, what I want y'all to do, not right now, but at the end of the video, because they're going to be there. It's not like it's going nowhere. Click on my channel, right? And then click on About Our Channels. Y'all going to see all the channels I got. Y'all keep on telling me, like, bro, upload. You missed a video yesterday. Like, I got a lot of channels that I be active on. You know what I'm saying? But yesterday, <clears throat> when I dropped that video, that ghost, you showing a lot of love for Mascus. Thanks for showing a love for Mascus. Woo -woo -woo -woo. First off, um, I don't do that for y'all. I do it for me. You know what I'm saying? No, I am not masking y'all. Be asking me that. I'm light skinned. I'm just a light skinned, like my mama black, my daddy black. I'm just a light skinned nigga. The reason why I show so much love to Maskins, um, I'm from LA. A lot of y'all know that. You grow up around Maskins. That's not the reason, though. My whole life, bro, Maskins has always been 100. You know what I'm saying? With me, at least. My best friend today is a Maskin. I fell in love with masking women before. The food is bomb. Um, it's just the culture. It just, it's just something I fuck with heavy. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to always show them love. They grind. They hustle. It's just something to, uh, it's just something to set a light on sometimes. Because let's keep it very real. When it comes to blacks, whites, Asians, out of all the races, the Latinos, the Hispanics, bro, it's like they frown upon like they're number four in the race all the time, and it's always been like that. When really, they the most hardworking, the most creative, you know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. Viva la Mexico. <laughs> we finna get to this video though. Shout out to y'all. Hey, and another thing, bro. Pray to me on link in the description. I got some videos over there, especially hood vlogs that I did not upload. I didn't, bro. We finna get cracking though. This uh, it's that video. In 2001, a man by the name of David Zink was involved in a minor car crash with a woman named Amanda Morton. David Zink failed to brake far enough back and crashed into Morton's car from behind. Immediately after the crash, Morton phoned police to inform them of the incident, telling them that her car was still running and appeared to be drivable. However, that was the last time she was ever heard from. When police arrived later- Bro stole her, or kidnapped her I should say, and with a lot of serial murders or whatever they look bro. A female, I keep telling y'all all the time, y'all most vulnerable when y'all by yourself. You go outside, bro. It's not a guarantee. And it's for everybody, but especially a female. It's not a guarantee you're going to make it back to your house. Ain't nothing guaranteed. I'm talking about 100%. Y'all looked at as weak, especially when it comes to predators, bro. One of the maneuvers they do, especially when it's late at night, they will bump your car. Just so you can get out in a minor traffic little accident or whatever think you finna talk to him get their registration whatever y'all communicate that's not the case bro gonna knock you out put you in his car and leave i'm not lying bro you got to be aware on all cylinders when you a woman it, 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 it might sound cold but it's life keep telling y'all y'all better stop acting like y'all live in the same world that i live in bro it's for real out here Later at the scene of the crime, they found that her engine was still running, and she had vanished, leaving all of her personal belongings inside of her car. So if her engine was still running, boom, she got hit from the back. What the f is what she's saying, bro? Listen to what they said. It's ever heard from, and appeared to be drivable. However, that was the last time she was ever heard from. 
When police arrived later at the scene of the crime, they found that her engine was still running and she had vanished, leaving all of her personal belongings inside of her car. To everybody that drive, think about what just happened. She got hit from the back. This is what we all would do, bro. So when somebody hits you, what the f You put it in park, boom, you hop out. You don't put it in park, grab your purse, your phone, your wallet, then walk to see who, you know what I'm saying? No, she put it in park, she hopped out, a voice snatched her and left the car running. Goodbye to her, bro. He did that on purpose. He, she. And to think about it, with y'all, it's not like a gang. It's not like a hood, bro. Don't go over here. You're going to get banged on. You're going to get robbed. You're going to get shot. Woo -woo -woo. It's not like that. When females get kidnapped and all that be random. You could be coming from the store, the babysitter, your house, work, Magic Mountain, the car wash. It's random. That's why it's so scary, bro. It's not like you could say, I'm not going over here because they're going to kidnap me. I'm not going over here because they're going to raid me. No. That happens everywhere. Every inch of this motherfucking planet, bro. Morton's photo was quickly spread across multiple local news stations, and a statewide manhunt began. A few hours later, a local hotel manager recognized her photo and phoned police. He informed them of David Zink, who had signed in at a hotel earlier that day. According to the manager, the woman was with him, though from his report, it doesn't appear as though she was in any major distress. She was scared. The hotel sign-in sheet led police to Zink's home, where he confessed to kidnapping and murdering Morton. He wow. then led them to a cemetery a short distance away, where he had tied her to a tree, broken her neck, strangled her, stabbed her, and then stuffed her mouth. Oh my god. Bro put her in a cemetery. He did this before. This is not his first time. Every time somebody do something like this and they get caught, it's not their first time doing it. It's just their first time in getting caught. Then he goes and take her to the cemetery. Like he burying her and he had his own little, you know what I'm saying? Throw the book at him. I don't get, that's why I be saying ghost for president and I be for real when I be saying that. Because I don't get how these fools able to get them a shower, three square meals a day. They still able to breathe like, bro, he would have been done. He would have got tortured for like five or six months and then I would have offed him. I would have had to off, you know what I'm saying? She didn't deserve that, bro. She walked in the hotel room. She didn't seem distraught. That's because that man told her, I will kill you, or he probably had a knife. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Mouth with mud and leaves, burying her immediately afterward. Zink's confession was later backed by DNA analysis found on Morton's body, as well as hair samples found in Zink's truck and paint found on Morton's car. According to Zink, he killed Morton because he didn't want to return to prison, as he had been released only five months prior, following a 20-year sentence for a crime that was strikingly similar to this one. What was it? After hearing his case, state officials wanted Zink to receive the death penalty, though Zink's lawyer didn't want a crime similar to that one, so therefore he did it before and y'all let him out. GFP goes for president. Therefore, he did it before and y'all let him out. Family should be able to sue, bro, and if I was the president, I'd get the $100 million. Because money don't account to nobody's life, especially a loved one after they get killed by a widow like this. So at the same time, why go ahead and award her a million dollars, fifty thousand dollars, two million dollars? Let's just go ahead and throw it off. Money don't mean nothing. They ain't gonna bring it back. But hopefully one day, this is the thing about somebody passing away, bro. This is the thing about somebody passing away. Time heals pain. You know what I'm saying? It really do. And what I mean by that. It's the first day you find out they pass, you hurt all day. For the next probably month, 24-7, you can't think about nothing. You don't want to go to work. You don't want to go to shower. I'm talking about a real loved one. You don't want to do none of that, bro. But after a while, instead of thinking about them 24 hours a day, you're going to think about them for 20 hours a day. And then it goes down to 16 hours a day, then 14 hours a day, then 12. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you will never, ever, ever forget them, bro. You never will forget them. So when it do get down to that, you only uh thinking about it 12 hours a day. I got $100 million and 12 other hours today that I could use to spend this money. You know what I'm saying? Money don't bring back the... Just, just give it a... 
This is the this is the failed system, bro. She did not deserve it. Want this to happen. He brought Zink's case before the Supreme Court on several different occasions, requesting him to be removed from death row, though he was denied all seven times. In regards to these hearings, State Governor Jay Nixon responded, stating, After serving a prison sentence for his crimes committed in Texas, David Zink abducted, sexually assaulted, and murdered Amanda Morton. These acts were brutal and horrifying, and a jury determined that the appropriate punishment for her murder was the death penalty. The guilt of David Zink and his crime is unquestioned, and my denial of clemency upholds the jury's decision. As this matter proceeds to its conclusion, I ask that the people of Missouri remember Amanda Morton and keep her family in their thoughts and prayers. Why they even... Attorney General Chris Cox... Bro, why they gotta even write all this? Throw the book at him. Amanda Morton got killed over a fucking loser, bro. Or by a loser. Look how cute she is, bro. She had her whole life ahead of her. She had kids, a job. She ain't no loser. She wasn't no crackhead, wasn't no smoker. I can see by her face, bro. On our way to somewhere or coming from somewhere. I, they got this whole well, David Zink did this and the jury upholding and the government. Fuck Jane, what the hell are you doing? What they say the government name? Jane, what? Damn. Foster then followed this statement, adding, The horror and fear 19 year old Amanda Morton must 19. have felt after being kidnapped by David Zink is truly unimaginable. 19. David Zink callously took a young woman's life, and it's fitting he pay by losing his own. Right. Ultimately, in 2015, David was put to death. Yes, sir. Take a look at his chilling confession yes, sir. video recorded by police just a short while after he was detained. You're trying to decide which way to do it. Yeah. Well, I told her, well, in my mind, I said, well, probably the easiest way to break her neck. And so I told her to look up. She said, up where? I said, up there. When she looked up, I broke her neck. Smiling over it. I'm glad they went ahead and offed him and killed him. He said, I told her, look up, look where. <laughs> and when she did, I broke her neck. Do y'all hear this, fool? Rest in peace to her, man. Her family got to watch this. That was no reason. 19. 19, bro. She just got out. Thought she was finna exchange insurance information. Damn. Here today and going tomorrow. I told y'all this before, I'm gonna tell y'all again. They say up in life, and this is everybody that's over the age of 21, 21 and older. By the time you hit 21 years old, at the car wash, in traffic, you in line at McDonald's, you go pick your kid up from school, you go to work, you at the DMV, and somebody sitting next to you. In your life, you encountered a rapist, a killer, and a kidnapper. You just didn't know who it was. And they say about four to seven times. You just don't know who they are, bro. This world is crazy. Now imagine you closer to 30 years old. You in your mid-30s. Y'all women be careful out there, man, because y'all pray. Sorry to say it. Y'all pray. Especially the ones, and I'm sorry to say this, especially them real cute ones that want to show off all that skin, them tights on, them dresses with, with the little crop tops, lip gloss, and you want to get in your, with no protection, no gun, no security, no boyfriend, no brother, no nothing. They will watch you and follow you. Until they can get you, but I am not lying. Predators are the most patient motherfuckers you will ever meet or you will ever see. It's a predator. That word didn't come out the air, bro. Predators, as humans, is just like they are in the jungle, bro. A lion, a pound, whatever. They will watch you until they can get you. To the women out here, y'all are prey. To the young women out here, y'all prey. Move accordingly. For real. Man. Okay. How did you do that? Just snapped it with you, just with your hands. Yeah. Okay. With my hands. That's when I took out the knife and I cut her. I just uh, poked the knife in her neck and then cut it. So to make sure that she was done.
going to remain that way. And I'm under the firm belief she didn't know where she was at. Uh, if, because if she had, she would have known that there was no barn back here. Sure. I mean, common sense would tell you, here's this guy, and he's got you pulled up in front of a damn cemetery. Uh, and She's scared. Walking you through the damn woods back here, what do you think is going to happen? Common sense would tell you, you come in the front. What the fuck? Listen to what he said. Walking you through the damn woods back here, what do you think is going to happen? She knew what was going to happen. She was probably panicking. She's scared. She's 19. She did not know she came across. Thanks. Rest in peace to her, man. Number four. <clears throat> in June of 2008, two armed men entered a small music recording studio and opened fire on two aspiring Christian musicians in a robbery attempt that only netted two guys dollars. Rappers, bro. What the, hell? the two assailants, James Brodney and Demarius Cummings, were quickly apprehended as they fled like in the victim's car. Once in police custody, Brodney informed police that they had robbed the studio expecting it to be occupied by, quote, rich white folks. He then added that prior to leaving, he made sure the two men were dead. He then proceeded yeah, bro look like a hater. You gonna go up in there and rob some Christian rappers. And at the same time, everybody know if they rich white folks, rich white folks ain't finna keep no money on them. Probably gonna get a Rolex if they had that. This is a Christian studio, bro. I don't be understanding fools sometimes. Like, I... I guess that just come with age and time. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna sit right here and act like when I was younger, I didn't think Robert was cool because you get it by any means. It's not like you got weirdos where they want to, when they think about robbing, they thinking about hurting the person they robbing. Then you got people when they think about robbing, they thinking about the item. No matter who got it, we want the item, let you go. If it's in a car, if it's on a person, if it's in a house, if it's, you know what I'm saying? But trying to rob Christian rappers, bro, when you, I bet you he believe in God. I I just don't I don't get people sometimes, bro. Rich white folks, no, no. By giving a step by step account of what happened, stating, "I just blanked out. I shot him, and he stumbled back. I shot the driver. He hit the ground, but he leaned up like he was gonna try to get back up. So I shot him in the, the car. Head. Then I shot his homeboy again, but he was still trying to run off. I knew he was going to die anyway, but just to make sure." Pop, pop. I kind of regret what I did, but things can't change, so no use crying over it. Cummings later informed officers of a similar story, adding, We didn't plan to shoot nobody and nothing like that. He got that hood mentality. He got that hood mentality. Growing up, well, I know in my area, you know what I'm saying? If it happened, ain't no use of crying for it. Tears can't bring it back. Tears can't make it come back. I don't care what happened. And by him saying that, bro, he just he just a young demon. He look like he of age and he just ain't got it yet. It's a lot of people out there that think they thugs and they banging. It's a lot of y'all watching this. I'm telling you right now, you ain't none of that, bro. You just bad. That's it, you not outside for real. Cause you hold a pistol, you be with your homies, right? They ain't none of that. That's a little boy and I don't care how old you is, whether you 25, 35, 45, you still outside banging, trying to inflict harm on another motherfucker. Grow up. Grow up. Cause ain't nothing coming from that but you getting smoked or going to the pen. A lot of y'all fools is not gangsters, bro. Remember that. I don't care how many you not. Real gangsters for real? And I know y'all hear it all the time like, real gangsters want to take care of his family. He don't need to be a thug. I'm going back to the gangbanging aspect, um, aspect of it. To the mob, to the gang. Real gangsters, like the mob, real gangsters, like people that started Crips, they took care of their family. So y'all out here just gangbanging and not take it. Real gangsters, and I ain't talking about the square type, how they want to put it up. Talking about real gangbangers that's out here banging. The real ones take care of their family, bro. They take care of their family, bro. They take care of their family, bro. We know that was not no fucking glitch. I'm just trying to get it through y'all niggas' heads, man. This shit ain't it. Take care of your family. It's not doing life in prison. They're taking care of you now. 
Hope your kid grow up. You know what's crazy? You, you fools get life in prison when your son, your daughter is eight, nine years old, 11 years old, 12 years old. Why they a kid you up in prison? Then they grow up. Now they put money on your books from their job that they got, bro. Can't wait till my dad get out. He's been locked up since I was a kid. I've been through it. I'm through it now. My daddy doing life in prison for murder, bro. I remember talking to him as a kid. And now today, money on his books. It's, it, it's like that, bro. Life is crazy. Like that. No, I take that back. I did tell him he probably had to pop them a few times or whatever. I did. But still, I didn't think he was going to do it. I ain't never seen nobody die like that, you know? It kind of shocked me, you know what I'm saying? I was shook. I feel really bad. I feel it was wrong, what we did. Following this, a small news outlet caught up with James Brodney to perform an interview as well as a video confession. Have a look. Let's go out there where the rich white folks stay. You know what I'm saying? Rob one of them. You know what I'm saying? So we get out there. So we walking through the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? And she is somebody, well, I guess the mother who was on the passenger side of the car, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We finna get ready to leave. I went back and asked, like, man, y'all got a, uh, one of y'all got a cigarette? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So he went to go reach for it, pulled the pistol. And that's the reason why, bro. A lot of people don't trust that bullshit. That's why they don't try. Hey, can I use your phone? Do you have a cigarette? Do you have a lighter? I ain't got nothing, bro. Especially if you in the neighborhood where you know that's the, they out of bounds. If you out of bounds, so you know they out of bounds. You know what I'm saying? There's no way I'm finna be on uh on on on, on Florence and Normandy chilling at the gas station and two white boys in their mid thirties walk up on me with suits saying, "Excuse me, sir, can I use your phone?" Can I make a phone call? No, you can't use my phone. You use the police, bro. You don't even look right over here. They didn't look right over there. And it looked like they still tried to look out for him. And this is why they don't look out. Because listen to what he said. He said when he reached. Cigarette, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So he went to go reach for it, pulled the pistol. Yeah. Shot him. Shot the driver, whoever the fuck he was. Shit. He like, the one I shot at first, he stumbled back. You know what I'm saying? Like, dropped. Got back up like he was finna run. The one I hit second, you know what I'm saying? He raised up like he was finna do something, so I shot him in the head. You know Damn. what I'm saying? Then the other Damn. one shit shot him twice in the head. Just make sure. Damn it. You know what I'm saying? I don't need that. Only cause they tried to look out for your broke ass with a cigarette, bro. And still didn't rob him. Just think about robbing somebody. Once you smoke him, you be so scared and spooked after you smoked him, you don't even rob him no more. So you caught two bodies for no reason. Give him the penalty, please. The death penalty is what I'm talking about, bro. Fry him. Fry him. Number three. It's crazy. In November of 2007, a man by the name of Daniel Furlong abducted, assaulted, and murdered an 11-year-old girl named wow. Jody Parrock. According wow. to Furlong, he was outside cleaning his garage when he noticed the girl riding by on her bike. He then asked the girl to come into his garage where he then assaulted her and tied her up behind a boat. He returned nearly an hour later and led the girl to his Like I said, this ain't like gangbanging, bro. It's not like, oh, I ain't going over here, I'm gonna get robbed. These fools is everywhere. I want y'all to do me a favor right now. Y'all got kids, right? Hey, bro, your girl live with you? You be at work sometimes, you mess with the homie, she at home by herself? Whatever the case, right now, pull out your phone and see how many sexual predators live up in your neighborhood. When they go to jail for all this, which they do, they got to register as a sex offender. And when they register, it comes up on your phone. Do it real quick. Look at all these weirdos that live next to you. By your kids, school, bro. By the store you go to all the time. Where you jog at, where you work out at, where you, you know what I'm saying? You got to watch these fuckers right there. Deaf to all of them, please. To all of them. Truck. He then put her inside and noticed a plastic shopping bag. He then placed the bag over her head and dumped her body nearby a cemetery, still gasping for air. He wow. states that he doesn't understand his own motive behind the crime, and recalled that as soon as he had kidnapped the girl, he began to panic, not knowing what to do. Just a short while later, Jody's mother discovered her daughter's lifeless body in the cemetery. After this, it took police nearly eight years to identify Furlong as the killer. And that's just a mom panicking, knowing when your baby's supposed to be back home. Driving around, that's the worst fear in the world. My daughter is not around here. 
She might be dead. Let me check the fucking cemetery. Worst nightmares come to your, 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 your daughter in the cemetery. Gone. Lifeless. These niggas crazy, bro. And then the coldest part is he's able to get arrested and go to court and have a court date, plead, explain what happened. And then you get these weird-ass lawyers, which we need to hold them accountable for representing these motherfuckers. They need to go to court without no representation. Well, ghost, that's the law. That shouldn't be the law. How this fool going to do that to an 11-year-old and still get and still have rights? What the fuck wrong with y'all niggas? That's crazy, bro. This is the United States. I don't, this is crazy, bro. Go to a cell, get to eat. You know what I'm saying? A lot of y'all don't know. When you do get the death penalty, it take them in between a period of five and 15 years to uh, uh, go ahead and give you the execution. The hell? It's supposed to be tomorrow. As soon as you get it, it's supposed to be, as soon as you found guilty, it's supposed to be tomorrow. Word is crazy. Once arrested, he confessed to the crime without much hesitation, stating, I just thought I was in the clear. Apparently, yeah, Furlong lived just before. around the corner from Jody's home, though he was never suspected as her killer until 2015. Just around the corner. Check what I told you to check, please. Please, that's y'all kids outside playing while you kick back watching Netflix, kicking back smoking weed. Your kids out in the front, or you think they're out in the front, they ain't there no more. Check. Check. When Furlong attacked another year. The cold thing about it is, they have you, they had these fools registered as sex offenders to be in the community. Instead of letting all these fools be in one community by yourself, when you get out, you can only live in this area. If not, you either can go back to jail or move out of town and move to another area where they got sex. You know what I'm saying? Why well, all these fools can't live together? How are you going to put them right next to me and my family? We just got our first house, just married with our first baby. And now you want to put, what the hell? GFP, man, goes for president. Fast. GFPF. Fast. AF. <laughs> goes for president. Fast as fuck. <laughs> for, uh, the, straight to the head. Look at this nigga. Don't even care. Nothing about his existence. Where the fuck is your lip at? You loser. You... It's crazy. Like Young girl. The girl thankfully managed to escape, and after reporting the attack to police, he was heavily questioned, where they ultimately linked him to Jody's murder. Reporting oh. around them, stating, I just thought I was in the clear. Apparently, Furlong lived just around the corner from Jody's home, though he was never suspected as her killer until 2015, when Furlong attacked another young girl. Damn. The girl thankfully managed to escape, and after reporting Damn. the attack to police, he was heavily questioned, where they ultimately linked him to Jody's murder. And the only reason I was just going to say that, and the only reason they found him, because he tried again. If not, he would have stayed up in that house. These fools, they, they, that, that temptation don't go away, bro. You, they up here looking for... They looking for victims. They looking for kids while they out on the streets. That's what they do. They predators. So you mean to tell me after you catch them and lock them up, that's gonna make them not want to do it? No. Why they locked up the whole time? It's all they thinking about doing, bro. They ain't around no women. To them, that's still winning. When they get out, they gonna do it again. But what y'all have them do? Register as a sex offender, and they cool. Bernie's fool. Murder. Furlong, age 65 at the time, was then charged with second degree murder. Ten, asked this girl to come over to help me move some stuff. She got off her bike, came up to the house. That's when I grabbed her, took her in the garage, threw her in the back of this boat that was in the garage. Her hands were behind her back. She said, will you let me go? And I said, I can't let you go. Honey. So I got her out of the boat. At that time, it was dark out. Got her in my truck. I thought, now what am I going to do? Why did you put the bag on her head? I don't know. I don't even know why. I thought at that time I was panicking. Well, you know, so I just wanted to get out of there. You wasn't panicking, fool. Number two. Burn on. In June of 2017, a 14-year-old girl, along with her boyfriend who was also 14, murdered her mother and younger sister Whoa. after a lifelong belief that her mother favored her sister over her. 
The two were dubbed the Twilight Killers and claimed that they- That is real life, bro. You always hear parents. You always hear parents. I don't love my kids. I don't love one more than the other. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That's how it should be. But at the same time, bro, you got that up in the household. One of the kids could come out looking better than the other one. The mama hate the dad, the kid coming out looking just like the dad, so they hate them. One of them is excelling, like excelling academically. The other one dumb as shit. One of them up in sports, he about to go to college, then he got ambitions of that, like NBA, NFL, it's there for, the other one not so much, bro. And that will, that will, bro, create jealousy and envy in the house. Mom, daughter, brother, sister, daddy, it will. I did a video like this. I want y'all to, uh, well, I don't want y'all to do it, but I, I did a video called Twin Murders, I think. These two twins off they mama, bro. They own mama, bro. He slashed the mother and daughter's vocal cords before killing them so that they couldn't scream. In what turned out to be a chilling audio recording of Kim's confession, Kim that. states that her boyfriend was the one who actually initiated the attack. She says that she entered the room to find her boyfriend smothering her mother with a pillow. She then watched the attack for about 10 minutes before ultimately cutting her own mother's throat. Wow. They then continued on to kill Kim's sister in a similar wow. manner. After this, the couple then took a bath together in order to wash off the blood from the victim's bodies. They then settled in for the evening, watched the movie Twilight, and had sexual intercourse, with Kim's family still lying dead in the next room. Yeah, they some demons, bro. Something was sick, and in life today, in life today, especially the women that's watching, we all in love with us, we can make y'all do whatever we want. We can't do no wrong. If it's cheating, y'all want to believe it. We ain't got no job, no car, no. Y'all will love us to death, bro. We can't do no wrong in your eyes. And females is just so. Now that I think about it, in all aspects of life, to where even when women didn't have no rights, and it's still like that today. I don't care what nobody say. They ain't got no rights really. Um, just victims of rape and. Mental abuse, bro. Y'all got it so bad. And I feel sorry for y'all. And it's not like y'all got the strength of a man to go ahead and fight off the fear. No matter how loud your voice is in this meeting room, on this intercom, it will never be louder than the man. That's how this world is structured. I'm sorry. I don't... Mm -mm. I feel bad for y'all. I do. But keep y'all head up. Be careful. You know what I'm saying? Be on your P's and Q's. Because this world wants you. Bad. Real bad. Not True. Police didn't find the family's bodies until two days after the attack. Though as soon as they were tipped off, they arrested both Kim and her boyfriend both of whom were charged with murder and sentenced to 20 years in prison. Wow. Take a listen to a clip from Kim's How disturbing they, confession. Is 14 too young? No, it's not. Penalty. Not even lying. I would have slapped the shit out of her a little while. She hour. was laying on her side. Um, and I don't know really how he stopped her, but and, he stopped and, it through the neck. I went into the room to see what was going on because I heard like noises and stuff. So I just wanted to check if he was okay. Um, he was on top of her um, with a pillow over her head. So you but helped? Ever since like I was young, like I've never gotten my mum. Um, uh, I knew that she favoured my sister more than me. Um, and even though she said that she didn't, I knew that she was lying. Crazy Number one. World, bro. Crazy world, bro. In 2016, a South Carolina realtor named Todd Colab was arrested after allegedly keeping a young woman chained by her neck in a storage Fat crate located in his backyard for more than two months. After the woman's rescue, police allege that Todd is likely involved in seven additional cases, all of which resulted in murder. Mm -hmm. When police were tipped off about Todd, they quickly flocked to his address. Where they One thing about serial killers, bro, 
And I keep comparing them to gangbangers. I don't know where I'm coming with this logic, but they not like gangbangers. See what I'm saying? You're not finna find three of these fools living in the same neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? That haven't been caught yet. Of course, sex offender, register, whatever, but you're not finna find three of them. The reason why I say that is if he adopted a girl, right? Put her in the backyard, tied her up to a tree, whatever he did. Had her hostage, hostage for two months. When she got loose, found out who he was, and then seen all the other crimes in that neighborhood that were similar, we coming to bro. Like I said, it is very, very slim to where you'll find another person in that neighborhood that'll do that. If we found somebody that did this and she got away, he did the other ones and they didn't get away, bro. For real. They found a 30 foot by 15 foot storage container in his backyard. Upon their arrival, they found 30 year old Kala Brown screaming for help from inside the container. Wow. Capturing the entire event on body cameras, police saw it away at the door before ultimately breaking the lock free and rescuing Kala. Shout out to Obama for them body cams. I'm saying if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have them motherfuckers right now. Let's be real. I'm being Take a real. look at this extremely emotional footage that was captured of the event. They got the Do you footage. know where your buddy is? Charlie? Yes. Wow. He shot him. He shot him. He shot Who him. did? Who Todd Colehep shot Charlie Carver three times in the chest, wrapped him in a blue tarp, put him in the bucket of the tractor. Locked me down here and I never seen him again. Okay. He says he's dead and buried. He says there's several bodies dead and buried out here and he okay. says that the dogs will be ruined if they go looking because there's red pepper. She was ready to get out, bro. How long they had her? Guilty to seven counts of murder and many other charges. How long they had her? Color brown as look like a regular fool that be at Ace Hardware. You know what I'm saying? Look like a regular fool. And the reason why I say Ace Hardware, cause he didn't went up in there to get all them tools. He had a tarp, a bucket. She was chained up. He had a 15 by 30 foot body. Damn. Like I said, you never know. And the cashier is one of them people I was talking about to where you 21 and over and you encounter a serial killer. Whoever rung him up, guess what? They encountered him. That's what I'm saying, bro. You never know. Whoever rung him up, took his little punk ass money, gave him his punk ass receipt. Didn't even know they was encountering him. As well as her boyfriend, Charles Carver, had been missing since October of 2016. Though after rescuing Kala, they found Charles's body buried in a shallow grave on the other side of Todd's property. Todd was obviously arrested immediately, and while in custody, he confessed to four additional murders, all of which took Eleven. place in a motorcycle shop back in 2003. This had been the only quadruple homicide in the county's history, and had remained unsolved until this day. Todd then led police to two additional areas on his property where he had buried Ew. other victims, though he didn't reveal their identities. Following his confession, police found his statements to have been trustworthy. Look at them fat ass arms. <laughs> Look like he got rubber bands on the motherfucker, right? Look how he was standing in front of the judge and he never have his day in court. Ain't that crazy? No day in court goes for president fast as fuck. No day in court goes for president. Why is he standing there about to get a sentence? He gonna go there, go to sleep and eat for a few. Worthy and highly believable and tied him to all seven murders. Take a look at a clip from his confession. All right, I left college, left my class. Okay. Drove to Bowen Springs, put the shoulder holster on at the CBS parking lot. Drove to the bike place, the bike shop. Um, got there. Um, not everybody was there. Uh, sat on a few bikes, did my usual, basically stuff for time, and doing my best to make sure that the pain. Don't he sound like a regular person? He sound like a regular person, bro. If you seen him and you heard him, he wouldn't even look like a serial. Y'all gotta stop trusting people. From now on, we ain't giving nobody no lighter. They can't use our phone. We ain't giving up no cigarette. Nothing in public. No excuse for us to give somebody anything or encounter us. We not finna be rude. Somebody say hi, you can say hi. If they hold the door open for you, say thank you. Anything other than that, no. Like your shoes. Bitch, shut up. I don't even say nothing. Just keep walking like, yeah, you like them. If he say you like your shoes, ain't no you reason why you got to say thank you. He already like them. And if he say he like them, you can't say, yeah, these are Jordans. He like them, so he know what they is already the fuck.
We ain't encountering no more strangers, bro, at all. Just because of no more strangers at all. I want to see y'all tomorrow or comment on the next video and like it and subscribe, notification bell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Customers were not there. This was during time, as you know, that it was not busy. Mm -hmm. I chose time that was not after work when I would have a lot of people in there. Um, did not want to shoot other people. Uh, finally all four showed up. From the sound, it sounded like there was nobody else there. I was sitting on a black Kawasaki Katana, 600 I believe. It's a crap bike. Um, it's a crap bike. Take it, at which point the mechanic took the bike to the back to prep it. Uh, sit around for a few moments. Get Sit so around the middle, uh, they're writing up paperwork. The building is very large, it's a 10,000 square foot building. Uh, proceed to go to the back mechanics area where where the mechanic was prepping the bike. Walked up, pulled out the Beretta, put the safety off, shot the mechanic twice. For what? Forward angle. For what? I immediately proceeded towards the front of the building. Okay. At that time, all three, manager, owner, and the mom, mm -hmm. were all, they were, had heard the gunshots, obviously. I had, all of a sudden, I had three people in front of me. Mom was the closest, and and I shot her two to three times in the chest. The owner and the manager ran for the door. They popped a few rounds. I ain't judging nobody at all, bro. I ain't judging nobody at all, but you're not finna hit my mom's and I just ran. I gotta go with her or try to fight it. A lot of people don't know this about guns, all right? They can only shoot one person at a time. <laughs> y'all know that, it was a little joke, but look, check this out. Me, I ain't telling y'all to do this, all right? Do not take my advice, me. If I see this fool shooting, I'm gonna charge him, you know what I'm saying? If three people charge a shooter at one time, he not shooting all three of y'all. One of y'all unlucky, don't get me wrong, but he not shooting all three of y'all. And I just gave him a chance by them running to go ahead and chase you down with no burner. Being in a business with no gun is crazy. Owning a business, bro. It's like owning a house, but the public can come in whenever they want to. You sitting in there, anybody can walk in there with anything on them. Nine times out of ten, you ain't got no security. You know, be careful out here. But y'all be y'all be living too safe, bro. A law cannot make me live that safe. I will have a gun on me. I will, bro. Don't nobody else play by the rules. And it's sad to say that in today's time, in order for you to be safe, you might go to jail if you get caught with a gun. No, you ain't looking to hurt nobody. You're not a gang banger. You ain't trying to slide on ops. You ain't trying to rob no bank or nothing. You got it fully for safety. You ain't never did nothing in your life. You're 40 years old. You ain't never did been, been in jail in your life. You know what I'm saying? You got a gun for safety, but guess what? If you get pulled over with it, you're going to jail. U.S. is crazy, bro. The United States is so crazy, bro. And got one of them in the back. And he crumpled in the door and dropped the other one. Oh, he threw out the door. I can't outrun no bullets, right? And he got all of them. You can't outrun no bullets, man. I'm going to get at y'all in the next reaction. Y'all be cool. One hundred.